Yes, for the next, our next guest here, we have Ari Kuoka, who will talk about Merge Friends. Welcome, Ari. Who? Test. Okay. Hmm. All right. Great to be here. Um, hi, I'm Ari. Uh, <laughs> I work as a as a design lead at Metacore. Um, first official games job, uh, 2012, as a junior marketing manager, company called Grand Crew back then. So uh, I guess we all have our, uh, our skeletons in our closet. Um, uh, these are the few games that I worked in my, in my career. One of them. I guess the biggest ones. Um, most of these I worked as the uh, um, design lead or, or game lead. Um, oh yeah, and a quick disclaimer. So the views and opinions in this presentation are entirely my own and do not res necessarily represent the views of Metacore. Um. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, currently uh, I'm the design lead at Merch Mansion team. I joined the company like two years ago uh, when the team was like 11 people. And now we're like 72, 73, which sounds like a lot, being right. Um, but yeah, go forward. So first I'll talk a little bit about design theory and then uh, I'll walk you through about our like uh, design philosophy and design pillars and then finally we go to the intrinsic motivation and how do you how do we use that in the design uh, in merge mansion but before that um long time ago there was an issue and uh i was baffled by this like why does certain kinds of features like uh have no impact to games performance or retention and like I'm I'm sure like we all been there like we do uh, we go to soft lounge or the game is already like live and you know we do our best guess like hey this feature obviously this is gonna gonna have an impact like at the time uh, we were working on one game and we did like a like a daily reward system and we thought like hey um, like hey free rewards it's cool like let's give it every day for the next month. And obviously, it's going to have an impact on the retention. Cool. No, it did not have any impact. The same actually uh, can be said about even tutorial. Um, but a little bit later, more about this. There's also, uh, much recently, I came across of another design problem. And um, this is uh, about Merge Mansion. And we were, I was thinking, like, what should happen after? player finally reaches their you know goal after three to six months and and you know it's it's quite a long long grind and uh, what would be appropriate like we could give gems or some normal reward but would it be like six months is quite a long time and what would be kind of this elegant solution that wouldn't cause other issues such as inflation to get to the economy and and so forth um the answer to these will come a little bit later, as you might guess. Um, so first, let's go to a little bit of marketing theory before we go to the actual design theory. So I don't know if you guys are familiar with this term called marketing myopia, but um, it was first introduced by Theodore Lewitt in 1960s in the Harvard Business Review. Um, and what this basically means is, is like a companies like uh, they have this or they get into this mode of having too narrow focus on short term goals and pretty much like they focus too much on the wants and not take into account the actual actual like needs of their customers and uh, there are some famous examples about this happening to several companies like for example 
Kodak lost most of his market share to Sony back when digital cameras came. Like they were focusing too much on the analog stuff still. And uh, uh, for example, Nokia uh, lost to Apple. Everyone knows that. And this is my favorite, the railroads. And this is by actual the man theory by himself that he used this example that you know they lost to the other means of transportation because they thought they were uh, in the railroads business rather than in, in the transportation business. And what is notable here is that at the time when they they were losing their market share, the actual market of transportation grew exponentially. So, like they they really didn't thought about what are the actual needs of of their like customers in this case. All right. Um, then, um, if you talk about the intrinsic motivation, you know that's the when. Uh, that refers to the drive to engage in behavior activity because it is inherently enjoyable and fulfilling. This is a strong predictor for uh, long-term retention for the, uh, for the player. And extrinsic motivation uh, comes from the external factors such as rewards uh, or uh, punishments or the desire to attain a certain outcome. And this is a short-term effect on the player engagement. And um, you know the players may play the game for the rewards but uh, they do if they do not find the game enjoyable or fulfilling, they are likely to churn. It's quite um, simple. This is our um, data to retention, which is, I'd say, like industry standards. It's pretty good. So, like, the, uh, our intrinsic motivation in the merge management kind of works well. Okay. Um, how this all kind of comes together is through these core needs according to the self-determination theory. And, and there's the competence, the autonomy, and then the, the relatedness. And two of the topmost ones, I think those work really well with the merge games overall. Um, feeling of effective in the action, acting the world and achieving desired outcomes, and then the autonomy experience in sense of choice and psychological freedom when, when the player gets to, you know, do their mergers in, in the order they want and uh, gets to discover their way around the game. And um, intrinsic motivation <coughs> are driven by our needs and then extrinsic motivations are fulfilling the wants of the player. So this is kind of finding this all, all nice together, like the marketing theory and then the uh, kind of design theory behind this. It's kind of feels like quite basic theory, but often, at, at least by myself, and feels like us designers, we kind of forget these basic things quite often. Kind of losing the side, getting to the marketing map here. So, merge management. How do we then use this in our, in our design? So, these are our design pillars. Uh, the first one is approachable. Um, easy to pick up and learn and Things are uh, revealed gradually. The second one is social connectivity, and players can find others who are alike and help each other. This is interesting in a way because we haven't almost at all yet tapped the potential in this with, with our merge management game. But let's see in the future. <coughs> the discovery never ends. This is uh, the first one that really caters to the intrinsic motivation. Like what uh, it. it basically means this kind of feeling that we try to achieve for the player. I wonder what comes after. And there is always the new item chain that comes after the previous one. And kind of the merging should never end. Then there is uh, the story and the mystery. Uh, solving one mystery leads always to new unsolved questions, which is important. And then uh, relaxing and coziness. And enjoyable and stress-free without asking too much. And the last three ones are pretty much like intrinsic motivational drivers or made to boost or enhance the intrinsic motivation of the player, ultimately leading to the uh, stronger long-term retention. And uh, I think the coziness there is, is something that is interesting in the context of, I'd say, like free-to-play economy, because a lot of that actually goes against the extrinsic motivations and the monetization strategies, because a lot of that is, is based on skipping time or, you know, like there's a, a time limit or, 
or a scarcity or things like that. So I think it's just important for us as a team to have that uh, there as that we are mindful about it, even though like, yeah, we often need to work our way around it a bit. Um, then merge management itself, like these were our design pillars and this is kind of the, the whole game is about mystery, the team, you know, the premise of, of like, that leads you to this uh, moment that I want to find out more, like uh, examples of this is like the merge items themselves. Like what is really important is that we kind of never reveal what's the next item or where you can get particular item. The player needs to find out it by themselves. And like, um, because a lot of, for example, casual games do it so that they kind of reveal everything. Like, hey, this is your goal, go there. But it leaves out the discovery and the autonomy of the player to actually that they get the sense of of competence and like discovering oh this is the next item and what's it going to be and we we kind of boost this also with having a like a like a story with the for example here there's the love story <coughs> love story item chain that then every item has a piece of story in it and when you unlock the next one you get the next piece of the story you. Um, another example is we have a mansion which we keep closed. <laughs> Great, right? <laughs> so you kind of have it there, but you never, never get there, at least so far. Uh, and like, uh, but that's the that's the importance that just having the mansion there, there's already a mystery. Okay, what's inside? Why is it there? What ha what has happened? And uh, another, I think, um, thing important thing we have is that we concentrate with the tasks almost entirely on like uh, the, 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 how to say, the player goals that, hey, these are things that you need to do. But at this level, we don't even show like what you're going to get after you complete it. And and that's that's kind of my next point is that um, after you tap the task that show it, then you can actually see the rewards. But the actual satisfaction of getting things fixed and another task is the actual reward. And the rewards given from the actual task, I think I would argue that they are actually quite irrelevant. We actually, um, early in the game, tested this thing or kind of by an accident tested this because we had a lot of the tasks done quite fast and we kind of just threw in some rewards like one XP from a task that took like uh, six weeks to complete a little bit lackluster, but then we fixed it. There was no change whatsoever in the in the KPS or anything like the reward for the player is that they complete the task, they get whatever they wanted to do done and they get the next task. Um, and I think that's, uh, why is that? Like, this is the thing, like they satisfy the players, uh, the rewards satisfy the players once, which are driven by the some extrinsic motivation and this is exact reason why, for example, the, the daily calendar had no impact because like uh, even though it's more rewards and the player can see that, okay, I come more to the game, I can get more of these rewards. But if the ground or the base need to come into the game, the intrinsic motivation is not there. That feature itself is not, not going to change that at all. Like those players who care about the rewards and have that need, they're going to come in but it's not going to change for those players who don't care about uh, those rewards at all. Like, they're not going to come in for more of that. And, uh, for example, in the case of tutorial, like, that's interesting. There's so many ways of, of like, making a tutorial, but let's, if, if we use as an example, like, a, a forced tutorial, which is quite a standard in many mobile games, that, okay, you need to do this and that. And it's nice because you get your funnel, the data is there like a, in, a, in a nice, you know, you can look at it in a very nice place because the steps don't happen in the wrong order or anything. It's always the same. But let's say then that stops and there's a step like you can see that the players, like 80% of the players get it, but 20% of the players don't get what you try them to do. And then, okay, the quick solution to fix that would be that, hey, let's add another first step here. And then you get 100% true. Cool. That's great. Okay. There's always a portion of players who don't get it for some reason, even if it's forced. I don't know what they drop or something. And um, but what happens there is that for those 
you get the twenty percent more get through, which is great. But eighty percent that actually got it, they actually had the kind of like they experienced the sense of autonomy and they got the discovery and the competence because they figured it out on their own, but suddenly they don't get that because it's a, it's a fourth step. So they have less autonomy or actually we take it completely away. And then like they, they, get, they lose the discovery and everything, which means that actually those players have le like lower intrinsic motivation to go on, which kind of results in then lower retention. And even the 20% who get through that, it's great, but even they are kind of suffering that there's no like discovery or or sense of autonomy for them at all. So uh, maybe something to think about next time doing a tutorial. Um, okay, a little bit more uh, like detailed issues in in merge management. Not issue actually. This is a this is a I'd say like a like a golden moment. We have few of those in merge management, and. Uh, uh, so first, there's this. I assume that you guys know how merge games work and how merge management works. So that you first have your level one stack of seeds, then you merge them to level two, then you merge them to level three, and you get the final to level four. And what happens then is that you get to tap it uh, 12 times. You get seeds out of it. Cool. Kind of makes sense. You have a pack of seeds. You get seeds. But what happens then is that you get a empty seed pack. Ooh. But that kind of, it makes sense because we could have made the producer just disappear and you get a next one. But instead you get left with this like empty seed pack. And once the player plays a little bit forward, they realize that, oh, I can merge these two. And this is, a, I think, one of those like precious moments we have in this game where this kind of subconscious train of thought of the player goes like, like, oh, okay, if this works this way, it kind of makes sense. And I can merge even this. So what else is there in this game that I, I get to discover still? Even though there wouldn't be anything else acting like this. But they're still, they don't know that. So this is, I think, a quite a strong driver for the, for the player to find more of these things. And, and feeling, uh, you know, competent and, and discovering new things. Okay, another example. So here we have a drawer item, um, quite small, yeah, <laughs> my apologies. Uh, but basically, <laughs> you merge them forward and you get to, uh, to the items level uh, on, the, on the white box there, from level four to, uh, to seven. And then they turn their producers, they produce bases, and then you merge them forward, and then they d turn into producers and you merge them, and you get flowers and you get a bunch of stuff. You know, it goes on and on and on. But like there's this special moment, like if you waited half an hour with the level one basis, and there's actually this thing that you can tap it and you can break it, which produces shrapnel, and then it produces a locker. And obviously you can uh, merge the shrapnel forward and you get into this chain of like a, um, mosaic. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Thank you, Patrick. Um, and then the locket chain, um, then you can measure it forward, it becomes a clock, and then that clock becomes a, a portrait, and it starts this sort of a, like a love story chain. And this gets us to the uh, design problem that we had earlier, that I presented. Like, it, it is a long chain. Both of these chains actually are so long that it might take three to six months for the players to grind until this far. And for a long time, we had this in the game, like, there was nothing. You reach the end, and that's it. And and it was like, huh, what we should do? Because easy solution would be that we give a reward. Like, let's give the player gems. But what amount of gems is enough if you grind for half a year? Like, quite a lot. And then, like, would that be still a good choice? Because, like, okay, we give a huge amount of gems, and what we get back is kind of inflation in the economy. Okay, we could give another chain. That's cool. But there's another problem in merch like two genre, especially with this called board pressure. And because the board is quite small, you cannot have items forever and ever because it gets tramped and then you get into selling items and that's not good. So um, how we solve this is that 
what we rewarded the player with is more gameplay, actually. So uh, once the player reaches this level three, the, the first like uh, rows, uh, we open uh, this teaser that, hey, like uh, you can see the item there that it says item record, discover the lost or item to unlock this area. And once you get uh, to the bottle of milk, um, then the area opens. And and I think this this was actually quite elegant solution. O of course, there's a you, we need to produce a lot of content for just this kind of a discovery. But this is also a moment that once the player reaches um, the level three and we have this discovery, immediately this triggers the same kind of thought that oh, like I found this one. So what else is this, is there in the game that I can discover? Like okay, I need to just I can go anywhere and, and like I can find this and regardless of if there's anything or if there's more but like this is another this kind of a golden moment and here's here's some data actually to <laughs> back it up uh, we checked like there's the blue line which is after this is actually portraying uh, basically churn of the players so oh the other side the retention so before um, there was nothing actually <laughs> like no reward uh, and then when we actually had this area, the, the retention rose roughly 2%. So it, it was, it's working. And um, then a um, few notes or issues about um, the game that we have. And, and I think these are actually quite specific to mar merged games, but these issues might be also quite specific to our game. But for example, here's a picture of uh, one of our events this is a christmas event two years back or like a snapshot of of the board of it uh, the point with our stuff is that it kind of needs to make sense to be fun and for the world work as, as a coherent thing so, so first there uh, up corner you get bricks and then you get to uh, put, do your own chimney and then you get to tap the chimney it produces this christmas like santa's bags full but also every now and then it also produces a coal like a piece of coal which you can merge and then you can of course use the coal to heat up the oven and with the heated up oven you can produce cookies cool um, also from the sack once you empty it you get gifts but then you're left with this empty seat back I mean, empty empty uh <laughs> no not the seat sorry uh <laughs> santa's pack <laughs> and then like uh every now and then um uh, when you tap it uh there's this unopened envelope that has been left on the bottom of the back like you know like from santa like you know uh, and then when you tap it of course you get uh, these christmas cards but also there's this wax seal which you can then kind of use to make candles and uh, which you can tap to light on and then you can speed it up to to melt the snowman over there and when the snowman melts you get this bottle of of uh, water and then a scarf and a twix and when you tap it you get the twix and the scarf cool it kind of works <laughs> But the downside with all of this is that that um, it takes a lot of time, and there's a lot of design brain power going going into this, and kind of to make this really fun and uh, working, uh, yeah, we we need we need to really do this properly, and then it's really hard to kind of like reuse this because like if if we change, okay, let's risk in this. And the things changing, like nothing makes sense anymore. Like it's it's doable, but it's it's not not very uh, easy. But this is still, I would I would say, quite easy because in our events, the the tasks that you do, they don't actually need to match to anywhere. Um, but here, um, if you look at the main gain items, this is another kind of an issue uh, produced by the meta that we have in the game because you fix tasks in the actual world map and. Once you use an item to it, it, the item kind of needs to make sense to be used in that task. For example, if there are leaves and you rake leaves, you probably need to use rake to do that. We kind of sometimes need to be, get a little bit creative with that. But um, um, what that also produces is that uh, is the issue with these items that you guys can see those brackets in the middle. It basically means that the usable items in these both chains are those items inside that because the early items are you can produce the player can produce them so quickly that the task is like done in a second 
And then the items at the end side, they just they might take a month. Suddenly you're stuck, boom, there. So um, there's actually only a small set of items that is usable. And, and, and then this is kind of also uh, affecting partially the, the board game pressure we have. So, and, and sometimes, yeah, because of the matching with the tasks, we really need to get creative. So here are some examples of what we had just took them from Reddit. Um, you know, like using the ways as glasses because <laughs> that was the closest object we could have and like um, too many se empty seed bags used here and there because, you know, they are quite handy whatever you need to take out from the uh, any items you need to put somewhere like just use those and so forth. And, and one of my favorites, which is also kind of because of our how meta and our items are, is the gloves. Because um, the gloves are produ byproduct of our main spawner, which is kind of like uh, producing the, the garden tools. And sometimes there's a chance to get a glove. And the gloves only go up to level 3, but the actual chain goes up to level 14. And if we ask one of those items, there's going to be so many gloves, like going to kind of produce as a byproduct. So then we have a lot of tasks asking those. But there's an issue there also that when you actually get that task and you don't have it, because it's a byproduct item, it's actually quite hard to get whenever you need it. So, you know, uh, things like that. Um, then, recap. Um, so, fulfilling basic needs is the kind of key for solid retention, building things on top of intrinsic motivation, but, but without forgetting the extrinsic ones, because the monetization is often driven by the extrinsic motivations and feels like the, the balance between these two is it's actually crucial for any game to work properly. But when the needs are properly established, it makes it easier to build the ones on, ones on top of that. Like first you need to have the needs, I think. And this is actually, the marketing theory that needs and wants, I think it's very handy in like uh, when we build, when I'm building a like a free-to-play economy and especially the tower of want because that's basically what it is. And, and yeah, it's just easy to kind of lose sight without this kind of a base theory in there. And when things happen that make sense to the player, it acts as a teaser of what to expect, like those golden moments that I showed you guys. Thank you.